Hey guys, it's Mr. C, and we are looking today at Chapter 2, Section 2, which is Simplifying Algebraic Expressions, and your what I should learn to help you focus going into this. Um, by the end of this, hopefully you'll have a better understanding of combining like terms and simplifying algebraic expressions. So let's jump right into this and talk about first, what are terms? Um, terms, there's a couple of different things that can be terms. These are all terms. You could have numbers such as 3, you can have variables such as x, and then you can also have the product of a number and a variable like 4y and 7y. And all these four things in this expression are all examples of terms. So numbers, variables, product of number and variable. We're looking more though at combining like terms, and like terms are terms that have the same variable factor. So that would be 4y and 7y. y and y are both variable factors in those, and those are like terms. And what you can do with like terms is you can combine them, and that helps you simplify an expression to make it easier to deal with later. Um, but we're going to be looking at combining like terms, such as these two things, in a little bit. But first, let's look at just a few examples of things that are like terms and things that are not like terms just so we don't confuse ourselves a little bit later. So some examples of like terms would be something like negative five and eight. These two things are like, they're both numbers, and they can be combined to simplify. We also could see something like two x and three x. These both have the same variable factor, that's x, and those can be combined to simplify as well. We could also have something that looks like two x squared and 3x uh, excuse me, squared, those both are like terms because they have the same exponent on that variable and that the same variable factor. And then another example would be something like 2xy, and you probably guessed it, 3xy. You're basically looking for things that match with the um, variable factors. So these two things are also like terms and you can combine. And this list can go on and on forever, but those are just some examples. And now let's look at some examples of things that are not like terms, and that would be something like this. Negative 5x and 8. Those are not like terms because the variable factor x is only on the, five, the negative 5, but it's not on the 8, which means they could not be combined, so they're not like terms. Another example of not like terms would be something like 2x and negative 3y. And this one's pretty obvious. They both have variable factors, but they're not the same. This variable is x, and this variable is y. They're not the same, so they're not like terms. And we'll do two more. 2x squared, and we'll do negative 3x. Now, this one can trick some people because, oh, you see the x, and the x it looks the same, but this is actually x squared. And this is x, and if we had a power there, it's x to the first. So these are not the same. They're not like terms. They can't, cannot be combined. And then finally, we'll end with 2x, and we'll go with negative 3xy. And where they both have an x, this one also has a y. So xy and x are not the same variable factors, so these are not like terms. And there's one other thing I'd like you to just keep in mind, which I know that many of us know. But just as a reminder, if a variable, and we'll look at one like x, doesn't have a number in front of it, we understand in math that it really has a 1 in front of it. So if I had x, it would be 1x. If I have y, it would be 1y. And that's the same for any variable that has no number in front of it. It really has a 1. And that's something you need to remember when you're combining like terms, which we're about to do, because the 1 is really what's there. And that's what needs to be combined. So let's look now at combining like terms. Like terms you can combine through either addition or subtraction. So let's look at an, an addition example first. And I know that this is something we've done before and you've done in the past, but it's always good to review. So this I already can see are like terms because m, m, and m are the same variable factors in these problems. So if I take uh, my number that's in front of a variable, that's what I'll be adding to combine these together. So I really have 5 plus 9, which is 14, plus 4m. And that leaves me with 
18n. So this full thing can be simplified down to this. And this is going to make it a lot easier when you're working with more difficult equations. So it's good to practice now so that you can work with those longer equations when we get to them. Uh, and let's look at just one example of subtracting with like terms, just to make sure we can do that as well. So let's look at um, we'll look at 2t plus t and plus 3t minus 17t. Now remember this t really has a 1 in front of it, so you can write it in there if it helps you. So I really have 2 plus 1 plus 3, which would be 6t. And I still have my subtraction to deal with, and all this is now is a little bit of integer work. So for those of you who love your integers, um, make sure that you are doing this correctly. 6 minus 17 should leave you with negative 11t. And that's all there is to combining like terms. So now let's look at combining like terms with a word problem. And I'm only saying this um, for those of you who use wacky variables when you're working with word problems, you are welcome to do that if you'd like. But my advice to you is when you're defining your own variables in a word problem, choose letters that make sense. So if you're talking about tacos and bananas, you're going to want to use T probably for tacos and B for bananas because it makes sense and it's going to help you when you're actually working through the problem remember what you're talking about. You're welcome to use whatever variables you like, but my advice, use one that makes sense. So let's look at a word problem now where we have to define our own variables. So we've got Joey. Joey buys five loaves of bread and eight cans of tuna for a picnic. Olivia buys a loaf of bread and two cans of tuna. Define and use variables to represent the total cost. Well, I already see two things I'm definitely going to have to give a variable. And one of those things is the bread. So I'm going to use B for loaves of bread. And I can't spell. And then I'm also going to need something for tuna. So the logical thing would be two. I mean T for cans of tuna. And I also know that I'm looking to represent the cost, so I'm going to use C for cost. Now in this problem I have two different pieces. I've got Joey and I've got Olivia and they have two different amounts of things. So let's start with Joey. And Joey has five loaves of bread, which we could represent as 5B. And he also has eight cans of tuna, which I'm going to represent with 8T. And if we move to Olivia, she has a loaf of bread. So you can either represent that as B, or if you like seeing the number, there's one in front of it, so 1B. And she also had two cans of tuna. Now, each of these things cost something, and that's what this variable is representing. And we're looking for the total cost, so I'm going to create an expression C, the cost is equal to five loaves of bread plus eight cans of tuna plus one loaf of bread plus two cans of tuna. Now, this is where you, combining like terms comes in handy. I can see that, oh, I have B and B. Those can be combined. So let's rewrite. C is equal to five plus one is six loaves of bread plus and then I have my tuna, so I've got eight tuna and two tuna, which is a total of 10 cans of tuna. And I have just created an expression, simplified it, combining like terms, and it's as simple as that. I'll give you another example to do in a bit, but the last concept I wanna look at in this section is simplifying with the distributive property. Now, the distributive property, many of you know, is in its most basic form, like this. I've got some number, and then I've got something inside of parentheses, and I need to distribute to everything, because what's really here? Multiplication, and the multiplication goes to every piece that's inside of the parentheses. So this little example would end up looking like this. 
because 3 times t is 3t, and 3 times 2 is 6, so I've got really 3t minus 6. But that's simple enough. What really uh, people have trouble with is distributive property with subtraction, because what most people don't realize is this subtraction sign is really a negative sign that's attached to the 3. And the 3 is what gets distributed by most people, but it should be negative 3 getting distributed. So my advice is to rewrite your equation as adding a negative and then distributing that into your equation. Because what are we really distributing or should we be distributing is a negative 3, not just 3. And that will really change the outcome of your equation depending on how you distribute. Um, so let's look at this. This should then look like 8 and 5 tenths times c plus, now if I'm distributing this correctly, it's going to go to both of these things. So negative 3 times c is negative 3c plus negative 3 times 5, negative 15. And you could rewrite this a lot simpler, 8.5c minus 3c minus 15. All I did was I then changed this back. and Instead of adding a negative, I just changed it to back to subtraction. And then I should notice that I have two like terms that I can combine. So 8 and 5 tenths minus 3 is 5 and 5 tenths. And keep the variable at c. And the 15 remains unchanged. That is what this turns into. So I took this whole equation. I distributed, and then I simplified by combining like terms. If you need to see that again, you can rewind the video. And I'm going to look at one more example of this. Um, and if you'd like to challenge yourself, pause the video, try it yourself, and then you can unpause and see how I solved to see if you've done it correctly um, as well. So if you are unpausing the video right now, I'm going to go through it step by step. We've got 11, and I'm going to rewrite this as adding a negative, plus, minus, and then I'm going to keep everything else the same. And now I'm going to distribute. So the negative 2 goes to this, and it also is going to go to this. So 11 plus negative 2 times 3 and 4 tenths is really negative 6 and 8 tenths, and then keep your variable b, plus negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. I should have parentheses there. So then I can take this and I can combine my like terms. So I see 11 and I see negative 2. So 11 plus negative 2 is really 9. So I have 9 plus negative 6 and 8 tenths b. And some people don't like leaving it that like that. So they can change it back to subtraction. And there would be your final answer. And all I did was I distributed, which you've worked with a distributed property before. This is just a friendly, friendly reminder that when you are working with subtraction in the distributive property, you're really sub, um, distributing a negative number into the problem. So make sure that you either rewrite this as addition of a negative number, or you're just very careful and you could take everything and distribute it in. And then of course here, is where I combined my like terms and I simplified my expression and it could be left as either this or as this. And that is the gist of today's lesson. We'll be taking this a step further um, in a little bit, but for today that's all I wanted you to get. So I'm going to leave this lesson with a closing summary question page. You can pause the video and write these down and try them yourself. I am not going to answer these in the video. I'd like you to try them on your own. You can either email me your answers at any point and I can email you right back and let you know how you've done or you can just save them for tomorrow when we uh, review this in the beginning of class. Make sure you write down or email me any questions you had on the lesson and I will see you tomorrow in school.
So I'm going to scroll down once just so you can see this last problem. It did not fit on the same page. Then I'll scroll back up. Actually, I can just leave it like this. So if you pause the video right here, you've got all your questions, and I'll see you tomorrow.